What's up my Pungios? Andy with Andy Vlogs. Excited to share with you guys this content here. As the title suggests, guys, we're going to be reviewing three separate 18mm lenses that are out here available for the 13 Pro Max. This has been a video long time coming because, well, honestly, the 18mm wide for the Polar Pro was delayed significantly. Also, I haven't been able to get my hands on a case that supports the Moment lens because of, again, supply chain issues and a Moment not sending me anything. Nonetheless, we've got three different uh, options here. We're not going to be going over the rigs per se. That's going to be for a different video. So make sure you check up above in the cards or down below in the description to go over the best rig for uh, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. With that said, we're going to be reviewing what they look like ergon ergonomically. We're going to go out then and we're going to shoot a couple of side by sides what each 18 mil provides. And uh, I do want to note here though that the 18 millimeter wide for Polo Pro does have a significant disadvantage, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to give it any uh, like handicap here because uh, that's it's the company's fault. They messed up on the production. They sent me the product. It's got some serious like spherical blurring. There's issues with the quality of the lens. Nonetheless, it's still an incredible product because it has a few more features that the others don't. With that said, we're going to review all of the, the lenses here first, and then we'll go on location and show you the side by side. Here they are, guys. This is what their cases look like. This is what the sizes are in comparison. Uh, you've got basically very similar application process where you screw it onto some module, some, uh, I don't know, some fixture, but they're all completely different. They all have opted into their own proprietary connector. This has a threading. This has two thin wing, t wing tips. This has two varied size wing tips. So you can't cross, basically cross pollinate their rigs. Taking off the lens cap here to show you guys what the lens looks itself. Um, again, three completely different builds for all three products. Uh, and I think, I, I think they all look beautiful, to be honest. You've got more of a spherical uh, oval here, I think, with the moment. With the Polar Pro, it seems like it's the smallest of the glass. With the shift cam here, it looks like we've got definitely the longest, uh, but not necessarily the fattest or thickest of it. Bringing it up close here, as you can see, the glass is really beautifully cut. You've got a really ornate, I guess, housing here. We do have a magnet just kind of free chilling here around one of the edges because the way that the lens cap works is it uses magnets. Backside here, you can see that the opening, I think is a little bit bigger than all the other ones, but it's uh, it's an all you know aluminum design here. The glass is beautiful. Looking at the moment lens here, you can see there's kind of a hood here, a lens hood to protect against glaring. I think it's more of an actual structure or like a ergonomic look because you still get some significant lens flaring. You can see that the, uh, the the glass is really, really round. I think this is the more the best all around looking lens housed in this metal body. You can see there the applicator, the wing tips. This is from Polar Pro. This is their 18 millimeter wide. Uh, you've got a two-tone, kind of a brass look around. In the, on the back side here, it's kind of interesting. You've got some air pockets. I don't know what that's for. You can see the wing tip and the opening. The glass on this lens appears to be the smallest. One thing to note here is that the, uh, the lens cap is actually a filter mount. So if you wanted to add the FX filters, you can take the lens cap off. And then you've got the, uh, the little hooks here for like a VND filter. You can even add like the anamorphic filter if you want to. Uh, but that's definitely an option. I found that to be really cool. Now I have a separate video comparing all three of these riggings and going over the pros and cons of all of them. Make sure you check up above or down below in the links in the description. We're just going to be going over the wide. We're not going to go over any anamorphic or any other telephoto lens because, well, the Polar Pro, uh, I just got the 18 millimeter wide and I uh, wasn't actually expecting it. Apparently the, uh, the whole set that uh, was supposed to come out um, didn't meet quality or something happened with the manufacturing and so there's some issue with the lens itself and so that one's kind of the underdog here because the lens isn't to par it isn't going to be the most clear nonetheless i think it would be fun to uh, review all three of these lenses here so that you guys can see them all righty we're going to follow this same kind of a pattern here where we pan to the left pan to the right you can see here on the Polar Pro that you've got some serious uh, blurring on the on the fringes there. That's because of the lens having its issue in quality control. 
backing up here. Gonna show you a shot against the sun as the sun is starting to set. You can see, uh, you know, there's no flaring. You, you get good exposure here. So you move away from the sun. You're able to get a little bit of flaring going on as we move closer. But there is, uh, there is some spherical like bending on this 18 millimeter. It looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, turn it to front facing and see what that looks like against my face here. I'm liking that. Lastly here, we'll show you up close, up against the fence. You still get a pretty good depth of field. I think that's really nice. We're on the shift cam now. Noticing there is no blurring on the edges, on the fringes there. You are get, you're getting a pretty straightforward uh, wide angle here. You're not getting like an incredible bowing going on right there. Let's go to back up and show you into the light. Sunlight, there's no real flaring. You can still, exposure's all right. We show the fence line a little bit more. There is some flaring here as it's reflecting off the lens. Let's go ahead and uh, I think I showed my face. Let's show you my face here, what this looks like, wide angle. Bring it across here. And we'll go up to the fence line and show you it close. Moment lens here. I'm noticing there is some bowing, a little bit different. It seems like the shift cam is, you know, the most square of an, of an image. Whereas uh, you can see it is a little bit wider up here on the moment. I don't know what the difference is. Backing up here and showing you the sun as it sets. The exposure and the fence. Seems like this is the most wide of all of them. It's gonna show you what uh, selfie look looks like. big old gaping hole in my fence. Let's bring it over here. Okay, we're gonna be doing the selfie shot here. My arm is completely extended. I'm showing you all the different instances where uh, we've got overexposure or my face is covering the lens. Uh, this is the moment uh, 18. Let's go ahead and run with it now. Show you what it looks like uh, when there's movement running around the house. Getting you that, that angle there. Looks pretty cool. All right, my ponyos. Well, that about does it here. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I think these lenses are really awesome. Fortunately, the Polar Pro, I think, performed the worst because of the, the blurring on the edges. I did notice though with the shift cam, there was a little bit of uh, a fisheye look. Sometimes when I would pan and zoom, just because the iPhone, you know, when it's doing the uh, optical image stabilization, it, uh, it didn't really mesh well. I found that the moment lens was the most reliable. It's been the glass that's been out there the longest. Uh, with that said, each one of these does have its strengths and weaknesses. I think the uh, moment is a little bit too heavy. The shift cam has, I think, the best rig. Polar Pro has the awesome uh, FX filter mount. Um, so, you know, it's up to you guys what you decide that you want to do. With that said, guys, down below in the description here are going to be links for the product pricing and availability. See if that, that's something that you guys are interested in. They are affiliate links and they do help with the channel. Also, comment down below and let me know what, uh, what kind of a comparison you'd like me to do. I'm hoping that I can get the anamorphic lenses so that I can show you that on uh, the respective products here from these brands. Nonetheless, guys, go ahead and support them. Thanks so much for supporting me. Hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more. We'll catch you on the next one.